setting up and we're going live. All right, mic check. Let me know when you can hear me and so on. Lots of dust here. All right, Kim, Richard, Ralph, Vinny, Mark, Mike, Jody. What's up, everyone? If you're in the chat, let us know where you're from. Yeah, audio, is good. audio is good. All right. Well, I think it's like 3 o'clock, so we'll get started here. Um, Mark gave me a check mark. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so a couple quick things before we start today's project. We've got some exciting stuff going. Um, did anybody watch last week the uh, live stream with Mike about the carving? That was pretty cool. Um, if you didn't watch it, the whole thing is up. Also, Amy broke it up into four parts. Four parts, so you could watch him individually if you want, and then watch the whole thing down the road. Um, but carving is cool on its own, but it's also really cool in the uh, turning stuff. So we're gonna be we're gonna keep going with the turning and the carving turnings and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Coming up very shortly tomorrow, uh, we're doing a an Ask Record Power at 10:30 a.m. Pacific time. So I'm going to say Pacific time. You do the math to figure out what time it is for you. 10.30 a.m. Pacific, because I think at 10.30, it's like 7 p.m. or something, 8 p.m. And it's much later in the U.K. And they're really awesome for doing that for us. So make sure you tune in, um, even just to help us support them showing up and taking the time. Now, it's going to be about Canvax, which if you don't know anything about Canvax, you definitely want to watch it. Canvacs are one of those things when we got them, we were like, what's this, like a fancy shop vac? And it kind of is an awesome fancy shop vac that does a lot more. Crazy power, crazy filtration, but watch this because I know, I don't know squat about them and I probably know more than most unless you have one, um, but Craig's gonna go over them and we can ask questions, it's gonna be really good. Next week, yes, what else you got? Oh, very cool. I didn't know that. On the 9th of next month, Amy just said, we are doing a project carving with Mike from New Zealand. So uh, if you heard that British accent, it is British, but he's in New Zealand. He's going to do a project carving. So he's not going to go over all the details of all the tools like he did this time. That was kind of the overview. But he's going to actually do a project. It's going to be super cool. So if you're interested in that, you might want to get some tools ahead of time and maybe carve along. I don't know but it's gonna be pretty cool. Speaking of that, I'll say this, if you're um, ordering tools or anything else, we are working on figuring out some free shipping options. So if you've ordered in the last few days, you may have said, hey, wait, shipping's free. Uh, we're trying to figure out what we can do and how we can do it. Obviously, machines and heavy items aren't gonna be included and there is a minimum. Uh, it's, right now it's 50 bucks, so that may or may not stand, I don't know. But if you order over 50 and not a machine, you probably can get some free shipping right now if you're looking for stuff. So kind of a, I'm not announcing it or putting it out there anywhere other than since you guys are watching the live stream. So that's kind of cool. We just are, we're trying to, you know, Amazon is, is tough to compete with. The problem is you're paying more on Amazon than you do most places, and it's because of the free shipping. But we're trying to figure it out for you all. So we'll keep doing what we can. Um, so tomorrow, another live stream for Record Power. Please tune in. Amy already put up the little thing so you can hit notify me. It's at a weird time for our normal live stream is at 3. That one's at 10.30. And then next week on Wednesday, our normal time, right, normal time? Mm -hmm. uh, Chris and Christy from Easywood Tools are going to do a live uh, live stream with us and turn some stuff. And there's a whole bunch of cool stuff they're gonna turn. Uh, I don't wanna even get into it because I'll say it wrong. Well, you tell me again. Christy is gonna turn a bottle stopper and a pencil cut. 
Oh, cool. Christy's turning a bottle stopper into pencil cup. I know she's going to be using negative rake. I probably can talk her into throw some beading stuff in there. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun, and she has a great time turning the chuck. the chuck. So it's going to be a good one. So next week, definitely tune in for that one because you're going to get a lot of cool easy wood information. Uh, I kind of want to hear about like how it all began and how they got it. Because I don't think they started it. I think they took it over, but we can clarify all that. Um, but they're known for good quality and Christie's a really good turner. So it's going to be a great demo. So <sighs> lots of stuff, a lot of talking here, but lots of fun. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel for that. And please share the channel because we're trying to get good stuff on here. Uh, not only the stuff we do here, but like, you know, bringing in record power and easy wood and others that are coming up. So please uh, share with your friends so that we can get more people watching this stuff. It makes it more worthwhile uh, to keep pushing and making it good. Okay, did I forget anything or miss anything? We did advertise that today you were gonna turn an element glass. Oh, okay. So Amy said we did advertise that I was gonna turn an element today with the new blanks, but I'm not. And I'll show you why. I got some stuff ready for you. Uh, as always, I'm Chad from Turner's Warehouse. Amy's on the chat, so if you have questions, she'll either ask me the question, I can repeat it on, on the live stream here, or a lot of times you guys are awesome in the chat and answer each other's questions, so that's cool too. Um, yeah, I think that's probably good to, good to go to start. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me show you why we're not turning an element here. And I'm going to jump over here to the table. Whoops, wrong one. So actually, I'll come back over here because it'll be easier to show these. So what we've got here are these new blanks. Now, if you've been around pen turning a while, there used to be a material, there still is, called Juma. A uh, really cool material. It's out of Germany. But it, it, in the beginning, it was kind of easier to get. And then it got harder and harder to get. And, uh, now it's mostly sold through like billiards places and stuff and nothing wrong with Juma. It's fine stuff, but it's just kind of expensive and kind of hard to get. So, uh, one of our suppliers started making this stuff. It's really cool. It's, uh, it looks just like Juma and I've turned a lot of Juma over the years. Um, but I actually think, and this is some people have made comments already that the patterning is better in this. And I think the reason is. If you look at the sides, it's solid, and then the pattern shows through on the two sides. I think these are made either in long rods like this or in molds um, because the pattern is more even and consistent. Whereas Juma, if you turned it much, occasionally you get really great patterning and then it would just like blur off some for some reason. So, I, so far, all of these that I've looked at look really good. And here I'll zoom in. So there's the teal and white. And I don't know all the real names for these. You'd have to look them up. I know there's sapphire and ember and whatever. But uh, they're really cool. We've got these five colors. If you guys like these and we do well, we'll try to get more colors. But they're really cool blanks. Now, uh, the main difference, I would say, is the turning of these. I've turned several already. Here's a brass element. Ooh, with a black nip in the, oh man, why can't I remember the name of this color? Carrie, if you're watching, tell me the name of this color. <laughs> um, it's the teal one, but it's got a name. But anyway, I already made an element. So when I told Amy, oh, we'll make an element, I was like, wait a minute, we already made one. And then um, Charles, Charles Stanley, who does He's turning, what? He's in the chat. Charles is? Uh, go to the Turner's team page on Facebook and Charles did a sapphire. He's done them on um, a junior monarch, which looked phenomenal. And I know he sold it right away. And then he just did, was it the king? Charles, are you there? Was it the king pin? I can't remember if it was a king or an emperor or something big, which is, he's a bold man because this is a normal size blank. And he did a full size 3764 tube out of this. And it looked awesome. I'm pretty sure he posted them on the Turner's uh, team page. Am I wrong? If not, Charles, will you please post them on the Turner's team page? Uh, but the Sapphire looks super killer. That's this dark blue. Um, Azure. 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 Kevin Carpenter's on. He's like, 
green, yeah, white, green, red, gold, whatever. Um, but anyway, so we, we've tested several of these, and even before we ordered them, we tested several of them. So uh, very good stuff. Now, what I was about to say was the main difference is this stuff, when you turn it, it turns like kind of like a powdery epoxy, but it smells like poly resin. So it kind of stinks, but not bad, and it goes away really fast. Um, but it has like a poly resin type smell. So I think it's a poly resin epoxy mix. And it might be because to get that patterning, they have to do something. And I don't know what it is, but uh, I'm wearing my uh, respirator mask with it. And the first one I turned, I didn't wear that and I could smell it right away. The other one I turned, I took it off and was like, oh, there's poly resin in that because I could smell it so abruptly after turning. So wear a mask of some sort, as you should with any resin, but these do have a little stinkiness to them, so turn the fan on and blow the, the smell out the door if you can. But totally worth it. Look at the, the color here. There's pictures of this one on the website, I know. This is the teal. This is a solid brass element kit. It's a junior element, so it's solid metal, no plating. And the contrast is really killer. So. Check those out. Check out the pictures if you want to know more about these. Now, they're sold two ways in a 10 inch like this. And we also cut them to five inch blank. So you can get five inch or 10 inch. I think you save a dollar if you get the 10 inch over buying two five inch. Patterning doesn't really matter because, I mean, once you cut it, it's going to be disrupted. And like the pattern is all very consistent. So I don't think it matters as far as if you're making a kitless or something, which, by the way, we will make a kitless out of this in the future. <coughs> Excuse me, but let's come over here and I'll show you what, what I'm talking about. So these are the full lengths. And today I'm going to turn um, some new mini bolt keychains. But check this out. So here's the golden. Here's my blank that I have left, and I turned three keychains or I cut three keychains out of it. And I still have more than enough to do a full size pen. And if I'm careful, probably another keychain. So getting the 10 inch blanks to me is nice because you can cut off what you need instead of saying, oh, I got a five inch blank and I can only get this out of it. Because I can probably get an extra one of these out of this and still a junior by doing the 10 inch. So if I did two five inch, I would only get one of these and three of these. So it's kind of like a little bonus and especially if you're doing kitless or something else, you know, with long tubes, short tubes, you can really tailor it. So the 10 inch are available in all the colors as well as the five inch, but that's what I would do. Now we're going to do two things today. The second is we're going to turn a Penn State Dragon Twist, which is a great pen. And I've made many, many over the years, but I haven't made any for a while. And we're going to turn it out of the white here. What's the name of the white? The white has a cool name. Ivory? Ivory. Makes sense. So you can see I got my two, and I kind of used a lot, it looks like. I wonder why I did that. I got my two blanks from my uh, dragon kit, and I can still easily get that plus something else out of this blank. So the 10 inch blanks to me are the way to go because you can really cut it to how what you need and not have a lot of waste but that's those they're called serpent scale or serpent blanks on our website and let's get started so what do you guys want to see first we're going to try to do i mean i think we can do a dragon and three mini bolt action keychains unless i just talk too much what do you guys want to see first the the dragon or a mini bolt I know, I'm already 10 minutes in, I gotta get turning. They're gonna turn real easy. That we'll spend more time polishing than we will turning, which is fine. But they, they turn and polish beautifully. All right, let's do it. You know what we'll do? Oh, we can't do that, I only have one set of bushings. I was gonna say we could put all three dragon, or all three, um, um, Keychains on with one, but I only have one set of bushings. Mini bolt, okay. Is it Richard? Richard, I got the mini bolts for you. All right, let's do a mini bolt first. 
We can always jump around. So I'm using a mandrel. This is a mandrel set of bushings for this mini bolt. We have it in three colors, chrome, gunmetal, gold. Uh, I am using a mandrel saver because I prefer the mandrel saver. You just slide it on over, lock it down, and then you just want to snug it up here. So I'm just barely cranking my handle until it's snug. Now I do have to seat my, my mandrel a little bit here. And then I'm going to lock it and I'm ready to go. All right. So for this, because like I said, they're stinky, I'm going to use the power cap. Oh, it's on the outside. You can tell I was turning resin with it yesterday. Um, power cap, if you guys missed it, is a powered air respirator. I'm digging this thing a lot. It feels like air conditioning on my face. And as it starts to get hot here, okay, watch this. As soon as I turn it on, oh, you gotta hold the button. Clear, too cool. All right, let's turn this sucker. So I'm gonna run the lathe as fast as it'll go. In this case, it is 30, nope, it's 4,020. I'm gonna use a negative rake, easy wood tool. Let's switch to the overhead. And I'm just gonna knock these corners off carefully. I gotta tighten it up a little bit. One thing, when you're first turning, I just put the mandrel in. Sometimes you have to tighten it up a couple times because your Morse taper is seeding into your lathe. So even though you tighten it up a little bit, it, it can kind of slightly move and that's where you get that movement. So then you can just give it a little snug. So the negative rake isn't like a mandatory on this, but it sure is nice. Is that too loud on the mic? It's kind of being quick and noisy. Oh, that's good. Glad to hear it. Yeah, of course. If you got questions, throw them out. I don't mind. As long as I can hear Amy ask it, I'm good. Let's take a look at this. Yeah. Um, so info on the power cap. I did do a quick video if you want to see like really in depth, I guess. Actually, it wasn't really that in depth. Um, the power cap is, it's a powered respirator. It only weighs one pound, six ounces, so I can hardly feel it. It pumps, there's a battery here, pumps air pulled in through here, down across your face and out the bottom. So it's not tight on the bottom, but there's air flowing. So it feels like a fan blowing downward. It's really nice. I live in Arizona. It's already hot here. I think today is 99. So this summer, I think this is going to actually make me turn more because it'll be cooler on my face than just normal. So I think it's going to be a real game changer. Uh, you can replace, of course, the filters, all that. Uh, we have more coming next week. So they are up for pre-order. And the only reason we did that is because people were like, I want to guarantee I get one this shipment because they come from the UK. And the distributor only gets so many per month. So we had to like kind of take what we could get. But I think we have about six more coming. They are pricey, I will say that. So I'm keeping mine in its case when I'm not using it and I'm treating it like a baby because it is expensive and I don't want to damage it. But I figure, you know, breathing in all kinds of crap over the years is also expensive. So let's stop doing that, I guess. All right, I need to slow down and not chip this thing. 
Now this is a pretty thin little uh, keychain. So I hope it looks good with this scale because I'm turning away a lot of material. All right, let's see what it looks like. Oh, it still looks super cool. So see, you can see the scales go across the side here. So that's what I was hoping for. That's gonna look good. Now we'll just get it up to our bushing. Multi-project day, it's gonna be cool. Any other questions, just throw them out there and we'll get them done. We do have a lot of really cool stuff coming up with all these live streams. Anyone watch any other live streams today? I know there was a couple things going on. All right, so that's it for that one. I'm just gonna try to knock these three out real quick if everybody's cool with that. And then we'll do a polish on them. So I'll show you how I like to rough, so to speak, rough the uh, square blanks. So I lock it up. I generally turn my lathe on before I tighten it up here so this isn't tight. And then I'll slowly approach with the mandrel saver and lock it down. I'll turn this at a little bit of an angle and I'm just using it like a diamond. And I'm gonna come across and I'll go slow. And here, let's take a look. So just that one little bit, I can go from square to really almost round. And it wasn't that rough on my tool or my hands or anything. So really makes it nice. And I'll do that a couple times. Well, I've got to tighten her down a little bit. The drill bit is a, yes, hold on. Uh, I just drilled it. Uh, eight millimeter or five sixteenths for the mini bolt action. It's a, it's a mini bolt action keychain. So don't get it confused with a mini bolt action pen. It's not that, it's a mini bolt action style keychain. And all the instructions are on the, on the website. Uh, and if you look at the mini bolt action keychain, uh, Carrie, our webmaster, has the instructions right below on the side. So they're really easy to find and really handy. And she has all the necessary drill bits and everything listed right there on the main page. So very easy. Now you can see this stuff is turning really easy. It's like very ribbony. It turns just like epoxy. Uh, but like I said, it has an odor. Do you smell it, Amy? It has a PR smell, like a poly resin smell. No, no, it's not as bad as like polyester resin of old. We used to stink up the garage with that stuff way too much. And that stuff was really brittle. These are not brittle. They're turning very soft and very fluffy, but they just have that odor to remind you. A walk down memory lane of terrible smelling blanks. Random pen turning question. Let's hear it. Yeah. Cracking? Yeah, so the question is uh, any tips for bog oak not cracking, I think, or coming apart? So bog oak is notorious for cracking, especially what happens is, you know, you've got this chunk of wood and you drill a hole in it so it's getting air from the inside 
and then you turn it down and it's a millimeter thick so essentially you're shocking the wood um, I don't even know I'm sure somebody stabilizes bog oak but I don't think I've seen it personally uh, I don't know how it would work because it's really a porous wood it's almost like an oak I mean it is an oak like it's almost like white oak in how it stable would stabilize I think um, I found most of the bog oak would like crack over time so I would say like probably once you turn it maybe coat it in CA or do a CA finish even though that's kind of a bummer because you want that rough texture of the oak um, but a CA finish would maybe hold it together from cracking and I'll tell you what I've done lately because I like the look of bog oak but I don't like bog oak itself I'll take Jack Daniels whiskey barrels turn them down and then I'll flame them like burn them and wire brush them and then I put an oil on them and they look amazing they look like a really nice bog oak but they're just Jack Daniels oak so I've been doing that because of the cracking problem with bog oak but I'd say probably CA or stabilizing is your your best bet say that again Oh, when you're turning? Yeah, so when you're turning it, you can definitely use CA. So what I like to do with fragile blanks is uh, I'll put CA around one end. You know, obviously turn the lathe off. Glue up one end really good. I'll turn the other end. I'll glue up that end, and then I'll turn off the CA, and I'll just kind of go back and forth and then do a final coat when you get down to size. Absolutely. I mean, you can see this stuff is almost as annoying as alumilite with the ribbons. So it's really great. And I'll show you when we do the, the polishing, it, it polishes really quick and nice. All right, good questions, you guys. So if you're new to turning, every pen kit has bushings that help you line up the parts. And every pen kit has instructions or project kit. And uh, you can find those on our website and it'll tell you the drill bit sizes you need, the bushings you need, and it makes it really kind of nice and easy. It, it's easy to get overwhelmed with all the different drill sizes and bushings and stuff when you don't know what's what. All right, so there it is. Let's see, that one's pretty close. You can hear my tool hit the bushing there, that's okay. The bushings are just tools there to use. All right, so I'm gonna take this off for a sec. And I mean, look how easy it comes off, right? It's almost like a hat. And I did find uh, I can wear my Beats headphones over this because it's so small and tight, it doesn't take up a lot of room. Okay, so. Quite a pile for these three little keychains. But what I wanna do now is get the uh, dragon laid out, but I wanna show you a couple things. Anyone who's made a dragon, I'm sure you know what I'm about to say. So here's our little keychains. Don't those patterns look cool? Maybe you can see, maybe not. So with a dragon pen, I'm gonna lay out the parts here. Let's get this. Even though this is like a antique pewter finish, I don't wanna scratch it. So with the dragon pen kit, now I, I learned this the hard way as I'm sure many did. So I'm trying to save you some headache and frustration. There is a pattern on the, the kit, the parts. So when you're doing this, set out all the parts and kind of look at it. And what we, whoop, what we want to look for is the direction. So 
you can see they kind of go the rounded part down. So when I eye up my blank, now I do have a longer and a shorter, and I think I know which one is which, but let me double check in the instructions. The shorter one is forward. Okay, so I was right. Oops, I almost set that right in the bucket of water. So this is how it's going to look. So I want to look at my pattern of my blank and say, does it look better this way or this way? Now that looks backwards to me, and that looks right. So the reason that's important is your bushings for the Dragon Pen Kit, you've got two singles and then the middle. So the middle is the same, so it doesn't matter. There, there's no size difference. But the, the ends, the tip is smaller than the back. So if I put this one on this end, I'm going to mess up because this is the, the lower and this is the upper. So I hope that made sense. But I like to lay things out like this. I've been doing this a long, long time, and I still lay out my bushings and my tubes. And a lot of times I'll even put them in so that I don't mix something up. Now this one does have a double to where you can put it all on at once. And then that way I can say, okay, that looks good or that doesn't. Now this one I think needs to be flipped because there's a pattern in there that's subtle, but I think it'll look better flowing that way. So I hope that makes sense and helps a little because if I did it the other way and then I went to put it together and went, oh man, I wish I'd have known, uh, that's, that's why I do that. So let's throw this on the lathe. And what we'll do is I don't normally turn two pieces at once, but this isn't a normal time. You can just put this on here and do this. And that tool rest is plenty big. So I like to typically do one piece at a time. I feel like it just, there's less chance of movement because this is longer and spread out but I think we're gonna be fine here, so let's do it. All right. So we'll snug this up, tighten her down. Oh, one thing I didn't mention, this ivory all these blanks are, are opaque. However, if you get anything thin enough, there could be some transparency. So I did paint the tubes white. Um, I don't think you have to, but I always err on the side of rather do it than wish I had. So I did paint the tubes white on this. And if anything else, it'll help make it brighter if it is transparent. So loud. Can you hear how loud that is on the mic? No way. The mic's right here by it, how loud it is. I mean, this thing is cranking. This lathe is going f almost 4,100 RPMs. So unlike those last ones I just did, they were straight. I mean, I made them straight. They could have had shape, but this one, this is a little bit smaller than this one, and this is bigger than this one. So I got a little bit of profiling to do to line up these parts. And I mean, look at this stuff. It's just like, it's just like a Lumalite is what it feels like. Turns like a Lumalite or epoxy, smells like PR and polishes like PR and a Lumalite. So it's kind of not a terrible thing, I guess. So there we go, I'm just getting that little bit of taper going. I'm gonna bring this down to the bushing. 
and kind of work it together. All right, that one looks pretty good. And I'm just feeling, you see me feeling on this, I'm just feeling the edge to make sure there's not a huge gap or anything. I can't even see where I'm cutting. There's so much ribbon wrap. Ribbon wrap. This, I think this is gonna look awesome. This is a, uh, it's going on an antique pewter dragon. I think it's gonna look really killer. Oh. Ooh, I almost cut too deep there. I better go this way. I gotta make sure I don't, cause I'm stepping up that way to the end. And normally I always keep my biggest bushing on the headstock side. So in my brain, I was tapering the other way. So hopefully I caught myself in time and I didn't ruin it. I think we're okay. Yeah, good point, Ralph. Ralph was talking about the center band on the dragon. I'll show it to you when we uh, assemble. But he's totally right. That's another place you can get a hiccup and mess up and be real frustrated with it. All right. So that is good. And I mean, look at the, this stuff just throws these chips everywhere. And sorry if that's loud. What I'm gonna do the other day I took the blower and just blew all this off, but it's in the other room. So we're going to do this. Hmm. Oh, I got a brush. Sweet. So I'm just going to brush this real quick because we're going to polish and assemble these. And I don't, I don't want to get it too dirty or too dirty in my water. All right, what a mess, huh? This side, oh yeah. Well, I'm just trying to get anything that'll get in the, in the water. Obviously you'd wanna spend a little cleanup time after you do all this. That's why it's good to do all the turning at once and then all the the polishing at once because if I turned and oh man if I turned and then polished and then turned and polished I'd have to be cleaning up over and over again. Oh see as soon as I turn it off it's like hot air. <sighs> like it's hot in here now. <sighs> it didn't feel hot till I had a fan on my face. Okay, I'm gonna need these in a minute. All right, so Dragon is set up. I think this is gonna look really cool. I'm gonna move it for just a minute. Now, one thing uh, is how I like to polish. And this differs, you know, from person to person. Um, you can use the mandrel with some polishing bushings. Uh, they would fit fine in there. Actually, we can do that since we won't have to switch it. I also like to polish between centers. So what these are, are just little bushings. They're made of like HDPE or something. And they just keep this suspended off the mandrel, but they give it space on the end so you can get your sandpaper up or if you were doing a CA finish, uh, you wouldn't have to, um, glue your bushings to your blank. Now I'm going to turn this way down. And we're just going to barely touch it because we're not worried about tightness here because, oh, wait a minute. We do need a little tightness. All right. And I'm not going to be wearing my mask now because I'm going to wet sand. So everything's going to be in my water. So I just keep a little tray of water 
And I did clean it this time because last time I forgot. And I'm going to use 600, then 800 sandpaper. And I've just got them cut into little squares here. So I got 600 and 800. This is just good like automotive uh, paint type wet dry. We get it from uh, one of the abrasive companies. I don't know. But I'm just going to do this really quickly because all I'm doing is taking out any imperfections of my turning, which if you do a nice job with your final turning round, you shouldn't have too much to do. Let's see if I can see it here and be a little better. And that, okay, so take a look at this. That's the 600. Now it is wet, of course, but look at this already. I mean, come on now. The pattern is really good on the back, on the sides, on the front. Not that there's necessarily a front. Let's keep going here. And all I'm doing is feeling for smoothness. I'm not changing shape or anything with this. As soon as it feels good all the way across, I'm going to polish. Because the polish will not take out any scratches. But this will. All right, that's ready to go. So I'm gonna grab my Zona paper. Uh, if you're not familiar with Zona paper, I'll kind of explain as I work here. Uh, that's a dirty piece, must've used that one. Zona is a uh, polishing pad method. It is six grits of these colored papers. I cut them into little squares. I'll try to do it so you can see it. Uh, it goes from about 600 to 22,000 ish and it does an amazing job. I like to leave it on for 35 to 45 seconds. I keep it wet. I always do all this wet. One, I think it looks better, shinier, and two, it keeps all that dust in the water instead of in the air. So this green one is the first one. You're going to see the most material come off with it, obviously, because it's the lowest grit. But you just run through these pads, and they're not really pads, they're papers. They're eight and a half by 11 sheets in the package. And then you cut them into whatever size you want. I usually do about this size. I'll use it for four or five pens, or pen parts, I should say. So like in this case, these top and bottom will be two. I'll use it for four or five, and then I'll switch it out. I feel like after that, it starts to lose its effectiveness. But Zona is a really cool material. Same as if you use micro mesh or any other polishing method. Uh, there's a lot of different methods out there. The Magic Juice is awesome and it's a liquid polish. Um, you can just sand with high grit sandpaper. Whatever you've got, use that. But this is my preferred. I do all my rings this way, all my pens, everything. And you can see as I go higher, there's like far less of that white slurry coming off because it's not necessarily removing material it's just really really fine and shining it but we're moving pretty quick here all right anything else going on in the chat any other questions coming up you're probably okay if you want to take that off but you don't have to <laughs> still smelly amy said it's still smelly out here it lingers for a little while, but not too bad. I think my nose is ruined from all the polyester years for smelling poly resin. So after this last one, this is the, the number six. Um, you could, if you want to, you could use a, a plastics polish. Generally, I don't really think you need to. Um, this is such a high grit, I mean, even a lot of times I'm just careful with a paper towel because the paper towel is so abrasive compared to this. But let's take a look. Oh man, that thing is gleaming. Here, let's see if this is a better angle. We'll pop this one off. So that was pretty quick and easy. Let's see if that focuses. So there's the side. The back scale, side scale, front scale. 
Looks really cool. Let's do the other and then we'll assemble. Anybody out there using Zona already? I only talk about it all the time. Yeah, the question on the power cap, go ahead. Does the face shield come with chemical filters or only dust? Uh, you know, that's a good question. Let me see if I know the answer to that. These are... <laughs> you know, I'd have to find out. I don't know what any of this means. Active replacement TH1 SL filters. So I'm not sure what the, we'd have to look into that. Uh, I don't know what the chem, is it, chem, they asked for it about chemical? Uh, yeah, what did you say, TH1? Um, SL? TH1 PRSL filters. I mean, that could just be their part number for all I know. I don't know the answer to that. I know it's like down to like a micron or less, something like that. All right, so there's my 600. This is my 800. I think I did a much better job on this piece. It felt way smoother right from the start. And I do like to kind of hit the ends just to make sure I don't have any burrs or sharp edges. I'm not rounding the edge by any means because I want a nice straight fit. So I'm not going to sand the edge over. I just want to make sure there's not anything sharp on there. All right, now to the Zona. So one of the, um, I guess this would be, you guys are a good uh, sample audience. One of the live streams I want to do is with a uh, expert in filtration and respiratory stuff. Would you guys be interested in that? Because I want to talk about these kinds of pieces of equipment and other options that are out there. Um, and I've got somebody who said they would do it and they're an expert in that. So if that's something of interest, I can plan it. But I kind of wasn't sure what everybody would think. I feel as I've gotten older, like protecting my lungs have become more important because you, you start to not be as young as you were, but I don't know. Yeah, if you're watching and you're young, start wearing a respirator right now. I mean, I did a lot, I will say. I did not a lot, and I did a lot. So as much as I did stuff, I wore it probably half the time. And I wore like RZ masks and everything forever, and they were fine, but they just didn't do that great of a job. Oh, no, what did I do here? Somehow I got out of order. Uh oh. I got to bail on that stack because now I don't know the order. Hmm. Um, will you have Carrie or Abby bring over a set of Zona? A pack of Zona? Two, three, okay. Not sure what I did there. I got them out of order, plus, you know, they're a little worn, so I'm gonna bail on them and get a new set. I thought I had a piece in there. Oh, this is looking good. This ivory is gonna look really killer with the uh, antique pewter. Okay. This stuff is so good. I almost feel like you could hit it with the 800 and then just uh, like do a plastics polish on it and it would work super well. I'll take the whole pack. I want to show it. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Yeah. Yep. All right. So let's take a look at 
this guy. All right. Man, that's killer. Do, do, do. Okay. So, because of my kind of mess up there, this is Zona paper. This is what it looks like in the uh, package. And I, I had them bring over a new package because I mixed up my last set there and now I don't want to use it. But I thought I had another piece to cut and I don't. So I just toss those when they're too far gone. And how this is, when you open it, stuff's awesome. Made by 3M. So you unfold it, that's the sheet. And then I just like to cut a strip off. And if these scissors are good enough, oh, they are. Usually about one inch wide. I try to keep them in order. It does have a picture on the front here showing you what the colors are and what the grits are. And they are 600, 1200, 1800, 8000, 10,600, and 22,000. So I guess that's why it works. And for some reason, that progression with whatever the material is works really well. So now I've got a strip. This will last a lot of pins. Certainly the rest of today and more. And I probably cut them more of an inch by an inch typically uh, just to save material. Because if I'm not using them for a lot, you know, obviously I don't want to waste the material. Oh, I didn't see in that one yet. Hit it with the 600 first. Oh, this golden is going to look sweet. What's the name of the golden one? Oh, we're smooth. Gilded. Gilded gold. All right. Perfect. I mean, that. how long did that take? Less than 30 seconds to do two grits of sandpaper. Oh, that's a great idea, Kevin. Is that Kevin Carpenter? No, Kev. Oh, Kev? Kev said he puts dots on the back of his Zona to know the order. That's genius. Then if you mix them up like I did, you don't have a mess. Oh, man, this, this is looking killer already. I haven't even stopped it yet. All right. Hang in there, people. This is going to be worth it. All right, what's everybody working on? While we're sanding here, we got to have a topic. Anybody watch our kitless series and make kitless stuff or custom pens? Somebody must. Awesome. I am going kind of fast on these because of the, uh, I know how exciting it is to watch polishing. <laughs> so I'm kind of speeding my way through here. I'm going to do this one first and then we'll assemble here. No, we need to just do them all real quick. We're doing good. We're good people. We're almost done. Not done, but almost done with this part. Let's see. I'm going to set those there. You know, what? here. We're going to do a non, a non stopping change. Sure it is. I mean, we're, we're moving so quickly that we're non stopping. Look at that. We're there. All right. 600. Eight hundred. We got people working on pepper grinders, walking fast. Oh, cool. Pine cone and resin gold. Uh oh, we got an issue here. 
Oh no. Oh no, this is horrible. My tube came loose on the on the the tube. My blank came loose on the tube. If only I had scuffed the tube. I always say I can't remember the last time I had one come loose or here it is. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I prepped these this morning, although it doesn't look like there's any glue on this one. <laughs> there's definitely glue. Look, it's right here. Oh, look at that. The glue like, oh, I know what happened. I must not. So when you drill these, remember I said they're dusty? I have to clean them out, and I bet I missed one. I bet there was dust in there, which the glue just glued the dust and not to the blank. Because there's like no glue. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, you got to wipe it out, blow it out really good, wipe it out. I always like run a paper towel through it sometimes with mineral spirits or mineral spirits or acetone. But, um, ah, wow, it's been so long since this has happened. So what I got to do, as long as it's not wet in there, I'm going to just make sure my tube ends are not flared at all because obviously that's going to make it tough to go through. I'm going to get a dry paper towel. Make sure my hands are dry. Okay. All right. <laughs> so I'm just going to make sure this is good and dry in here, as dry as I can. Mmm. Scuff those tubes, people. I'm just kidding. I still won't scuff tubes. <laughs> All right. Let's glue this back in real fast. Whoops. There we go. So I just want to make sure it fits in there. Looks like it's good. I don't want to get any glue on that. I'm going to be careful. This should be relatively easy because... What I'm going to do is put the glue up here. Man, I bet that totally is what I did with the dust. Okay, push it on. And I'm just going to try to wipe, make sure there's no glue on the inside or the outside. Looks like we're good. I'm going to hit it with a little accelerator. And we'll let this one sit while I do the other one. And then we'll come back, because I mean, look how cool this already looks. We'll come back and finish that one up in two seconds. As long as I don't have the same issue here. Feels all right. But we always, we always jokingly talk about scuffing the tubes or not. Um, could it have helped? Maybe. But I honestly think that was caused by the dust in the blank, because I remember wiping out several of these this morning but i can get distracted easily and i had five pieces so um there's a good chance i didn't wipe that because if you don't you're not gluing to anything in the blank it's all just the the uh the dust inside because it's like a coating of dust when you drill these especially because i drilled them fast on the lathe all right so that never happens, right? Of course it does. It always happens. You'll have all kinds of little things like that. The key is just making it work. You don't have to scrap the blank or anything. It's fine. Just re-glue it and keep going. All right. We're doing good here. Good stuff. See that? Didn't even slow us down by a minute. Maybe a minute. Any, uh, anything else coming up here? Anybody? Uh, Richard, said oh. that Richard keeps Q-tips around. Q -tips for that. Yeah, that's actually a good, good idea because then you can swab the inside with like some thinner or something just to clean it out. Did you use medium or thick CA? Uh, for gluing in these tubes, I used thick CA. 
I pretty much always use thick, um, unless I just don't have any for some reason, but there's always thick around. That's my preferred. My preferred. And I do normally try to glue stuff up the day before I'm gonna use it, even though I spray accelerator on the ends, that doesn't do anything to the inside. I mean, it's not curing for hours sometimes because it's trapped in there. There's no air getting to it, so that slows down the curing. Um, so I do try to wait. Usually I glue up one day and then turn and polish the next, but these I did this morning, so they were a little fresher than maybe normal. All right, that one looks cool. We're gonna jump back to our other one. Oh yeah, that looks awesome. Now if I was worried, wait, which one am I at here? This one. If I was worried that I had anything in there, I can deburr it. I don't see any glue. And I don't see any on the end because the end is important because if I had any glue on the end, it would stop it from meeting the shoulder of the pen kit. So what I can do is hold this flat on my lathe and either spin it or just slide it. And it looks like it's good. There's no glue coming off of it. And it looks like it's flat. I, I don't see any protrusions. Protrusions. Mascara ones? It sounds good. I don't know what it is, but it sounds good. I mean, a wand, like a, like a Q-tip shape. It's just a tiny bottle brush. Kind of. A bottle brush, yeah. yeah that would work great. Ones, yeah, good tip, good. Kim. All these dudes are going to be at Walmart buying mascara wands. Maybe not. All right, so 800. I forgot where we started, so I'm just starting over. Feels pretty good, though. You can see with this 800, look at all this white coming off of here. That's the resin. All right, last one. And then the fun stuff. Oh, and I got some news when we get to the, the putting together. Some news. I'm actually really excited tomorrow about the cam vac thing because there's so many things that I need to know about that. And actually, next week will be a load of fun because Chris and Christy are a lot of fun. And Christy's a really good turner. All right. Oh, for his mascara brushes? Whatever you gotta do, Mark, we're not judging. All right, did we lose everybody? Because I know once you start sanding on YouTube, you know, everybody falls asleep. We're okay? Okay, people are still here. You guys will be glad you hung in. The good stuff's coming. All right. And these little, uh, these little keychains, they're not super expensive, but they're kind of cool. And they're a pen. So, all right. Look at that beauty. See, these little bushings kind of wedge in. This is an eight millimeter. That's the smallest tube you can use for them. And they kind of wedge in there. I'll show you this one here. They look really cool. Darn it. Okay. All right. Let's head over. Let's do, uh, let's put the dragon together first. And what we will do, who was it that mentioned earlier about the, the center band? That's all right. You know, you're out there. So what he was talking about is there's a, this presses into the tube and that's the, the distance it presses in, but there's a lip up here and there's a lip on here. So there's a slight little recess that that sits down in. 
So if you put this backwards, it's going to be sitting on top, and it's not going to it's not going to fit right on the top portion where this is because you're going to have it sticking up a tiny bit. So that was a good tip to mention that, and you want it to sit down in there. It would flip the hand around too, if that matters, I guess. All right. So let's grab our pieces and do a kind of a quick eyeball. Remember, this one is relatively the same. This one has a larger end, which is gonna go on the cap. So you can see there, that's too small. And that's just right. Also, our, the way our pattern is, we wanna make sure we like the orientation because we did it a certain way. I believe we did it that way. And that fits the bushings. What do you guys think of that? That's pretty cool. Okay, now, I think I said it earlier, I've made a ton of these over the years, but it's been a while, probably, probably over a year since I made one of these. And I've made these a lot with, um, uh, Janet Stormwind's made a cool dragon scale, and then a lot of steampunk ones with the, the plated copper and aluminum look but I haven't put one together forever. So what I wanna do is go ahead and get started with this. We are going to first put the bottom together. Now, a couple things. Uh, I said I was gonna tell you about the pen press. So this is the, the Miles Craft pen press. This is my favorite pen press. We've carried three different ones over the years. This is the one that I think is the best. Um, and the others work, but I like this one the best. There is, we are out of stock of these. This is the 4700, the 4701. The new version of this is coming next week. So I will have the new version next week. Now, the reason that's important is the new version came out, I think like maybe even around like COVID or right after, but it had a bad piece in it. It had a flaw. So they stopped making it while they fixed it and made it better. And now it's fixed and it's coming out and it's awesome. So uh, we will have the new version. But back to the pressing, I've got these little pieces of plastic that I drilled out in a couple different sizes. And what I use these for is to protect the tip or the threads when I go to put these together. Now, I'm gonna put the tip on first. So you wanna put it in there. And you can see that this is spring loaded. So you put it in, align everything. The tip is gonna push into this and then you put these little stoppers behind it, however many you need to get your pressure right here. So now I can put that in there, gently push that in, and push it until it stops. Now sometimes this will stick a little bit, but because it's like a soft plastic, it doesn't mar anything or scratch anything, and it looks really good. Now we can put this guy in, and the same thing here. Oh, I remember this now. Let's see if my thing is small enough. So I think that my hole in this bushing is small enough. And what I'm gonna do is I'm still gonna use the front for the tip. Whoops, don't do that. Because I don't wanna tweak the tip, but I wanna get this in here. I'm gonna spend a little second getting this lined up right. And what I'm pushing here is against that little shoulder of metal. I don't wanna push on those little tiny threaded started going a little crazy. Little tiny threaded pieces, known as threads. <laughs> Probably no one's listening anyway, so it's fine. Little tiny threaded pieces known as threads. And so I don't wanna push directly on those because look how thin that is. And if I push on them and it's even slightly bent, boom, those are gonna crush. So I never push on small threads or big threads if I can avoid it. So I got the spring on the refill. I'm gonna put that in, make sure it looks good. Occasionally, it won't come out. And if you look in there, there'll be a little tiny ball. And what it is, is that's from their polishing machines. They're little tiny pellets and they might get stuck in there. So now we can twist this, make sure it works. The ink's deploying. Look at that pattern. How cool is that? It's awesome. Okay, now the back is, is pretty easy. The back just presses in one part. Um, now this part is important 
because this is what threads on to hold the cap piece. And the cap of the dragon is really heavy, so you gotta be careful of that. Now, I don't really care where this is lined up because I can tighten that up and move it anywhere I want, but I do have in this press, there is a hole in the back plunger. So I can put the threads in there, put all my stoppers and just press it in and it's done. So I'm gonna put this on the side, the clip on the side here, because I don't wanna cover up any of the cool pattern. I'm gonna tighten it up like this, get it good and snug. Can adjust it and tighten it. Now, I'm gonna look at the pattern here because I want those to line up, sides, back, push it together, and then twist. Actually, I'm gonna pull it apart because I want it to be together when it's not deployed. So there, I'm gonna push it right there. All right, and there it is. That's a cool looking pin. All right, very good. Let's do one of these guys. So I'm gonna just set that guy aside. Dump out all these parts. This is super simple. There's not very many parts. There's one, two, three, four, five parts. Five parts, including the ink and the spring. So we'll grab one of our guys here. We're gonna push this front on. Now, this is a flatter, more robust end, so I would feel comfortable pushing on that. However, I would not wanna put that in the hole in the back here, because I don't wanna leave a ring around the tip, but I could put that in there. I'm just gonna kinda of hold it, make sure it gets started correctly, and it did not. I'm gonna restart. There we go. And that lines up nice and perfect there. So you see those bushings line you up just perfect on the metal parts. Now we're gonna do this guy. All right. And, you know, I don't know, this feels like a solid piece, so I think it's okay. I guess if I learned the hard way, I would know different. Oh, it almost fit in there. So what I'm gonna do is go just above the hole. Oh, that's real crooked. I'm gonna hold it straight. Oh, I didn't put my plunger behind. Oh, come on now. So if you go crooked like that, just stop and readjust it. And then repress, whoop. And there you go. And that looks really good. Now, simple key ring, right? That's a really cool hook. Yeah, this is a nice little key ring. You can unthread the tip. Put the ink in, there's a little ball on the ink refill, snug. Put that on there. And you got a little bolt action. All right, there's one, let's do the next one. And how cool is that pattern on there? Doesn't that look great? I mean, we did four, we're, we're gonna have four little projects done here. Now, obviously I tubed them, some better than others this morning. Um, but even with tubing, you know, another 15 minutes. So you can actually make a pretty nice project in a relatively short time. All right, now I'm gonna pick which side I want. Actually, I think that looks good. So again, Put that up there. Oh, and again, I started a little crooked. It's hard to see when you're kind of looking at the top.
top, I guess. Oh boy. Well, at least it didn't hit the ground. Let me see, maybe I got a burr in there. It is not wanting to go. Maybe this was my problem child. Oh, a little burr came out. Huh? There you go. That could have been it. Who knows? It could just be end of the day assembly. Okay. Third time's a charm. Or is it? Yes. Okay. Get this guy. And I am kind of aligning this where I want it for the look. Good. All right. There we go. Two down, one to go. I mean, these, I don't know, I've never actually taken keychains to craft shows, but these look like they'd be cool craft show items. Anyone ever take these to a craft show? Not these necessarily in particular, but keychains. Seems like a good idea to me. Yeah, it's like, it's like a two for one here. You get a pen and a keychain. Come on. Yeah, bolt action pens do really well, so I wouldn't, wouldn't think these would be much different. All right. Oh, yeah, these are cool. Yeah, Rick would know. This guy's a craft show king. There we go. All right, keychain part. And Charles posted his pin in the center. Oh yeah, so if you want to see the the uh, the serpent scale, the blue on a full size king, Charles from Charles Stanley Pens posted it in the group Turner's Warehouse Turning Team. On Facebook, mm -hmm. Charles is a pro pen turner, resin caster, woodworker. All right, there you go. So we got one, two, three, and I would say a pretty cool dragon. Bam, four pens. Actually, that's technically four pens no, three pens, four pens and three keychains in like an hour, right? Hour 10 with a lot of talking. Vinny also says that they're great to use, or they're great to see if you can use your cutoffs and they sell pretty good. So. Yeah, I mean, you saw the blank size on those little keychains. So your cutoffs get put to use and they're good sellers. Um, I mean, I don't know what I'd price those at, but they're pretty cool. But that's, that's pretty cool to do a set like that, and you could have different colors available. So pretty neat stuff. What do you guys think? They look good? Yeah, so, you know, out here in Arizona, show season kind of tapers off right now because nobody wants to do a show outside. I guess we do have shows inside sometimes, but... Um, I know the rest of the country starts doing stuff right now. Let's see if we can see these. Terrible at holding them up, I guess. So that's what they look like. I don't want to drop them. That'd be bad to do on camera. Hold still. Holding still. Sometimes you have to have a hand behind them to focus. So anyway, four pens, three keychains, even though three and three were the same. But it counts as seven items, technically, right? 
four pens, three keychains. Pen, 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 keychain, keychain, keychain. So seven things done in an hour and 10 minutes. I'm not saying you should go fast. I'm just saying you can do a lot of cool stuff. Uh, but I hope you liked it. I hope you like these new blanks, the Serpent series, five colors available. If you order, you probably get free shipping if you do over 50. So check that out. Um, don't miss tomorrow the Record Power, Ask Record Power at 1030 Pacific time. So look up where, what time it is yours. I would try to get the live. It's going to be really cool. And then next week, we're going to have some fun with Easywood tools. What else? Is that it? I think I got it all. Amy's been doing a bunch of editing, so check out the new videos and stuff she's putting up. They look really cool. And I guess if you have any questions, let us know. Good to go? All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Mike.